Hello everybody, welcome to my book review. Today we are discussing a bestseller and one that I know has been popular with many book clubs out there. This is The History of Bees by Maya Lunder and uh, it's on an iPad so the reflection is terrible but that's the book cover. Oh yeah, maybe. Anyway, so that's what we're discussing, The History of Bees by Maya Linda, and I know many of you have read this. Now, I love this book. I thought it was technically faultless. It was superb, it was ambitious, took big ideas, uh, was, executely, was executed impeccably. So there's a however on the end of that. However, one of the reasons why I really want to talk about The History of Bees by Maya Linda is, for me, it falls very much into what I'm seeing a lot of in contemporary fiction, in novels that have come out in the past few years, and that is to do with characters. But anyway, we'll come on to that. The History of Bees is not as dry as it sounds. This is a very clever, beautiful novel that weaves together three different plots in three different eras to create a book that not only examines who we are and where we're heading uh, and the global catastrophe and climate change that we are bringing about, but also looks at family and legacy. So the three stories that we follow, well, one is in 19th century England, where William is an eccentric biologist who's hard up and his impoverished family have to suffer while he insists on trying to break through with new ideas for beekeeping that could revolutionise farming and bring fame and honour to him and his family. The second timeline is in modern day United States, so 2007, 2008-ish, and in there we follow George, who is a farmer struggling to keep up with modern beekeeping. He is seeing how modern techniques are industrializing the process and he is being left behind. However, he has hopes that his little family business will be reckon will be rescued by his son who will be able to lead the family business and take it on when George dies and lead it on to better things. And we then follow another storyline set in the future, 2098, where we follow Tao, who lives in a very oppressive Chinese state in a future where farming has died. And Tao is one of the many workers who have to forcibly paint pollen onto trees in order to compel some form of pollination to a to uh, occur because natural bee pollination has failed, causing widespread crop failure around the world and people are starving and the world has fallen into desperate poverty. Upbeat. Now those three storylines are, yes, they're all about beekeeping and the way Maya Linda evolves those three storylines, they have a wonderful meeting point at the end. But ultimately what those three storylines have are intricate plot complexities that propel them on by themselves. So in the past, 19th century England, we have William who is um, struggling with an alcoholic son. His ideas for beekeeping, uh, people think he's mad and that he's not focusing on day job and getting money for his family. And that big conflict that William has in the past of he wants to be famous and have honour and privilege and be recognised, uh, but his ideas just don't ever seem to be of the right ideas at the right time. He is always the wrong man at the wrong time. George is someone in the States who in the modern day um, storyline, we see very much other people around us working in agriculture, people who are really struggling with against modern techniques, the issues of modern fertilizing techniques and pollination techniques are they going to be counterproductive are we taking the human element the natural element out of our farming and relying too much on mass production and mass processes which could ultimately backfire in the future and then we have this future futuristic dystopian tale where Tao the mother of a young child um, there's a tragic accident that happens to her child and her child is whisked away from the collective farm where Tao works in deep secrecy and deep intrigue. And she takes it upon herself to challenge this huge state structure in China and find out where her child has gone and what has happened to it. Now, that plot sounds a lot and it is but it is weaved together beautifully by Maya she has we follow each plot you know each chapter sort of revolves around and each of them progresses just right to keep you 
page turning to keep that narrative drive going and for about halfway through the book you're not even sure how the three plot lines are even going to meet because yeah sure they're all about beekeeping but ultimately they're all about separate issues with their families um, and that is actually really a key element to this book is that about families and legacies because as much as this is the history of bees and collective global crises this is about the problem that we have um, within our families. So much as George and William want to leave their ideas and businesses to their sons, their sons have very different ideas. And in the future, we have the power of a mother's love willing to challenge and overturn even the most crushing of states in a bid to find the truth. And through Tal's journey, we begin to see what has happened to the future. So... I cannot fault this book, largely. It, it is an extraordinary achievement to weave together those three fascinating plot lines or sort of romantic novel, dystopian fiction, contemporary subject matter. I mean, there's so much going on there and it's this book isn't heavy. You just whisk through it. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. However, the reason why I want to talk about the history of bees is when I came around to recommending it to people, I found a lot of people glazing over and they wanted to know more about William, George, Tal and the characters. And the truth is, I found myself reflecting a lot on some of the vlogs that I've done recently of some very big novels that I was really pleased to read, really ambitious works similar to History of Bees that had taken on a huge subject matter and had executed them wonderfully. And I found myself struggling to remember some of the characters in those books. And I know there have been quite a few comments on my um, Naomi Alderman's, the, my review of Naomi Alderman's The Power, and that there is a general consensus that the characters in that book are not well drawn and that they're kind of... Uh, archetypes to keep the plot moving in the direction that Naomi wants to take it. And I'm finding this a lot. I'm finding that what happened to the era of memorable characters? What happened to the sort of, I don't know, I'm being naive here, but Joe March, the Sherlock Holmes, the Oliver Twists, the Elizabeth Bennets, you know, I know those are all old books, but even when you go to um, sort of Brett Easton Ellis's American Psycho or Holden Caulfield or Atticus Finch, you know, these great characters that stay with you. I'm not reading many great books that have actually really invested in memorable, complex, nuanced characters that you actually want to revisit or stay with or carry on the journey with. William, George, their families and Tao, they're, they're wonderful, but they're there for a reason. And though they're very fleshed out, there was nothing in them that I would say, oh, this character, this character is wonderful. You know, like Olive Kitteridge, <laughs> I'm picking old characters, but it's very rare for me now. I'm finding where books have written characters that I would really go, oh my goodness, this character is so good. She's like a perfect character, this child, Harry Potter, you know, whatever. I'm not finding them very often now in these big books. When I pick up books, I'm finding that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm impressed more about the plot than remembering really memorable characters. And I say that because in my own writing, I'm investing a lot of time in creating memorable slash iconic characters. I do spend a lot of time thinking, I want this character to be cool, or I want this character to be really nasty, or I want this character to be really complex and introverted. And I'm finding myself spending a lot of time investing in characters, much of plot, and I'm finding, as good as History of Bees is, you'll read it, you'll put it down and think, that was fantastic. And then when you come to describe it like I am, you'll find yourself describing the plot and not the characters. I think that's what I'm really trying to say, is that there haven't been many plot, any book, many books recently where I've been describing characters, how I've fallen in love with characters. History of Bees, I cannot fault it. It's beautiful, it's fantastic, its execution is excellent. The trans, uh, it's just, it's superb. It's superb, but I don't want to take any of these characters with me, really. I think that's all I'm really trying to say. Um, and I feel bad for saying that because this is an extraordinary achievement, this book. It really is technically excellent. The History of Bees by Maya Lunde. Love the book, uh, but if anyone can recommend me some great books with really fantastic characters that I want to spend time with, please do.